بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين الى يوم الدين اما بعد social media technology all these platforms are the new permanent record you think so you deleted it you think so you're not been watched you think so there's nobody eavesdropping on you wake up so technology comes with a price and it's uh, eroded many people's lives say relationships nowadays are harder why because conversations have just become texting that's only you're in the same house sometimes in the same room and they texting arguments become phone calls so you want to vent your anger now you make a call and tell them what you feel and feelings have become status updates so technology can be used or abused and what happens is somebody's privacy is violated it's put on social media and worse than that is the comments that people make like you have a right to discuss somebody's life you are part of that guna and sin so the media is the most powerful entity on earth it makes the innocent guilty the guilty innocent and it controls the masses so nabi ali salatu wassalam has highlighted the importance and cautioned the ummah of namima ulama have written that an uh, namima min kaba'ir dhunub it is amongst the greatest of sons carrying tales tale bearing alama ibn hajar haythami in his kitab az zawajir has mentioned that bal hiya kashf ma yakrah kashfuhu It is not limited uh, the, the disclosure of ending whether it hurts a person whether it offends him if it is disclosed whether it is the person who is spoken about or is offended the person who hears the gossip or the third party whether it's disclosed verbally in writing by means of a hint a gesture in whatever form it is transaction uh, uh, transmitted in action a word a fault a shortcoming in a person who is talked about or in someone else so this is namima so a person who uncovers any secrets and discloses something which is not appropriate to disclose so social media nowadays forget hinting it's clear cut blatant so in the situation if we had to go back 30 40 years ago we'd say keep silent refrain from telling anything about people situation unless there is some hikmah some wisdom etc you had to warn somebody somebody is deceiving a con man in that situation it's a different case so disclosing a person's secrets is called namima if what you say is a fault a shortcoming in the person this is riba so we should understand the difference riba is a fault a shortcoming which is in a person which is al riba to ashad min az zina worse than zina namima is disclosing a secret and he, he is is clearly said alama mundiri uh, has clearly identified that ijtama'at al ummatu ala tahrim an namimati wa annaha min a'dham al dhunub 'inda Allah azza wa jal the umma the ulama it is unanimously agreed that namima is forbidden and it is one of the greatest sins in the sight of allah 
So, even if a person is amongst his colleagues and they mention something and he goes to the boss and reports, it is as if he is creating mischief and spying, which is haram. So Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam has, has warned us لا يدخل الجنة نمام A person who spreads namima, discloses secrets, carries tales, will not enter Jannah. In another riwayat, no eavesdropper, that is qattat, the word in the hadith is qattat, will not Enter Jannah, la idhul Jannah qattat. So what's the difference? This is a riwayat in Bukhari. So a qattat is someone who spreads namiwa. So let's say somebody is in a group and they are speaking about something and he spreads gossip about them, whatever was said in that group, then he is namam namima. But a qatat is the one who listens to this group of people without them knowing that he is eavesdropping and listening to them. And then he spreads the news. So nowadays both are common without people knowing eavesdropping is taking place. And with people knowing that you are in the conversation still. So. Social media has become the markas, the mamba, the, the foundation of all of this here. Because we have different chat groups, we have different platforms, and, and, and the most of the conversation are about other people. So we have to be very careful. So we say in these mudakaras are made of privacy, one is so that nobody could eavesdrop on your conversation, on your life. And it is very important as a believer that you take precaution. These, whatever has been mentioned in this bayanat about privacy will prevent, insha'Allah, we, at least we should try and, and, and adopt the means to protect ourselves. Likewise, it has also been mentioned so that we be cautious and we don't fall prey to this guna as well. Once Nabi alayhi salatu was salam was in Medina Munawra. For some years out, he heard two people being punished in their graves. So, uh, what was the reason for their punishment? What's the cause? Yu'adhibani. They are being punished, not for something that was difficult to avoid, but it is a great sin. One of them were not particular about the urine. So avoiding contamination, soiling of the clothes through the urine drops. That was one. And the other one was Yamshi bin Namima. La yastatir min al bowl wa Yamshi bin Namima. This person here used to spread namima. So even severe punishment in the Qabr as well, we can see clearly how dangerous that is. And that's why as people of Iman, we, we need to make sure that uh, we take the precaution and uh, we don't get caught by shaitan and all this plotting. La the burn punishment, severe punishment being meted out for this crime. So we have to be very cautious and and make sure we protect ourselves. Likewise, Iyakum Wadvan. Be cautious, beware of suspicion, for suspicion is the falses of speech. وَلَا تَحَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Do not eavesdrop, do not spy one another. وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا Be like brothers. 
somebody passed some malicious gossip to Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz. He said, if you wish, we can look into the matter. If you are lying, you will be one of the people mentioned in the verse that in Ja'akum Fasiqun in Surah Hujarat, if a liar, evil person comes to you, then we'll make amal on that ayat that we will investigate if you are telling the truth uh, or not. Otherwise, that was if you are lying. If you are telling the truth, then you will be one of the people mentioned in the Quran about Hamazim Masha'im bin a slanderer going about, carrying tales. Or last option is we will forgive you. So this person said, O oh, Amirul Mu'minin, forgive me, I will never do it again. O oh, Amirul Mu'minin, for forgive me. So what you hear from somebody, what you heard, what post you got, just forward in it. Sometimes people sabotage, some people make lies, they want to discredit people. And we forward these messages. We are partisan to that guna in crime. So the mizaj of the ummah should be to obey. Sami'ana wa apa'ana. Allah has forbidden this. I'm not going to go on that platform. I'm not going to perpetrate the crime. And more than that nowadays is gone out of hand where if a woman's privacy is revealed, any body part of a woman, whichever Sharia has outlined, which is part of the satr, and we forward those pictures as well. So that's private and you're making it public. So to we have to we have to really reflect and check ourselves. Where are we going to which direction? Was it Monatani Rahmatullah used to say that those murids and people that come to me, I do not put any difficult, strenuous conditions on them. Only thing I ask you is to follow my instructions. So I don't compel you to mujahada, I do not wake you up in the night, I don't decrease your food consumption. A little bit vigor, but besides the vigor, abstain from sin. Reform your habits. So, a person, as it was trying to explain, that this is a very easy task, but you just need to learn to follow instructions. So, we've got caught up in this technology wave, and it's become the platforms of ghibad, of, of hasad, of uh, namima, of Qatat, different forms of evils have come alive in the Ummah. And uh, there's complete degeneration from the family structure, from the parent to the children, from family structures are destroyed, reputations have been destroyed, marriages have been destroyed also. So, to such an extent that people now post, they make posts, I love being married, it's so great to find one special person you can annoy for the rest of your life and then people comment about it. So uh, a lady went to the police station to report her husband missing, she said he's 35, 6 foot 2 inches tall, the uh, blue eye, dark wavy hair, athletic build, weighs this year, soft-spoken, he's good with the children. She mentioned a few qualities. So the neighbor was with her at the police station. She said, no, he's uh, five foot two inches, he's chubby, bald, he's, uh, and mentioned all the bad qualities, mean to the children. So the wife said, uh, I know, but who wants him back? Who wants him back? So this is a zamana we are living in, that... Uh, it's all about getting, taking revenge, exposing people, and, and finding faults. So uh, somebody posted as well that uh, telling his friend that love is entirely a matter of chemistry. He just recently got married. Love is entirely a matter of chemistry. That's why my wife treats me like toxic waste. My wife treats me like toxic waste. So, 
we have to be very cautious, we have to be cognizant of, of what's happening in the mahal, in the environment as well, and take precautions as well. So eavesdropping, so one form is the fun ek freaking method, which is called the fun ek radiation. So it's a way of eavesdropping, special equipment, using electromagnetic emissions from electronic devices. So there's hidden signals, there's data, and this data can be recreated, these signals, where people can spy. So another name is a side band electromagnetic radiation emissions. So these emissions or the right equipment can be captured whether it's your keyboard, whether it's your display, whether it's your printer, any electronic device and they can capture it. So how did it start? In 1985, Wim van Eck, he published some unclassified technical analysis of some security risks which emanated from computer monitors. So uh, people believed at that time that this was only available through governments, but he showed that a eavesdropping scenario is possible from a few hundred meters using $15 of equipment and a television set. So it was named after him. And uh, in World War II, there was some form of technology which was used uh, to, 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 to access information. Likewise in the Korea War in 1950s, etc. So this freaking process of exploit, exploiting your gadgets and a person can be many, many meters away and they can simulate and duplicate all the information that's on your gadget. So uh, normally, for example, we've got uh, pixels on the screen and there's an, uh, a beam, this electronic beam, this signal. So uh, is uh, duplicated and uh, through this duplication, it is very easy for people to eavesdrop. In 2004, some academic research was done with regards to laptop displays, flat panels, and uh, one of the university labor laboratories made this equipment. It costed around $2,000. It's a very cheap form. In 2015, there was a project called Airhopper. From the Georgia Institute of Technology and uh, just demonstrated that uh, an, a key logger would be enabled uh, to communicate and everything that you press on your keyboard on a program Android cell phone as well uh, was used to access all that information so Anybody nowadays, it's not an expensive exercise to track what you are doing as well. And this could be used also to compromise uh, elections, computer voting machines. So we have to be very careful and take precaution uh, of, of what's out there. People are gullible. Even after hearing this, they will say, no, it doesn't pertain to me, but I'm a nobody. But um, this knowledge is an important knowledge, which many people have no clue about. The amal for today is to read Salat with a Jama'at in the Masjid. So Salat with a Jama'at in the Masjid 25 to 27 times, reward. إِذَا تَوَضَّعَ فَأَحْسَنَ الْوُضُوْ ثُمَّ خَرَجَ الْمَسْجِدِ person makes wudu then leaves to the masjid ideally we should be making wudu at home not in the masjid unless a person is a musafir or the wudu broke but other than that we should have a routine of not making wudu at all in the masjid لَمْ يَخْتُوْ خُطْوَةً إِلَّا رُفِعَتْ لَهُ بِهَا دَرَجَةً every step that is taken 
his rank is elevated. وَحُثَّ عَنْهُ بِهَا خَطِئَا His son is wiped out. فَإِذَا صَلَّى Then when he reads Salah, لَمْ تَزَلْ The Malaika continue to salli عَلَيْهِ مَا دَامَ فِي الْمُسَلَّى As long as he is continuing his uh, sitting in the place of Salah and uh, performing Salah etc. The angels send salutations. Allahumma salli alayhi. They make dua for him. Allahumma arhamhu. Allah have mercy on him. Wala yazalu ahadukum fi salatin man tada salam. As long as a person waits for salat, he is considered to be in salah. Allahumma khfil lahu. Allahumma tub alayhi. And they make dua for his maghfirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and make an amal wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.